What's up guys, Casey here with Dwarf Star Drones and in today's review I'm gonna be going through how to set up a beta flight on this little guy. It's the Eashin Teeny Cube from Banggood. This goes for about $17.50 uh, in the United States and um, it's a pretty good board, you know. It's really small. It can definitely go on something a little bit smaller than this 150. You can uh, you could definitely fit it inside here. This is the this is uh, the brushless galliot. This dude's a pretty nice one too. And here I have the femto. But without further ado, let's uh, let's get into the setup and this review of the Eashin Teeny Cube. Okay, guys. So you're gonna want to go ahead and open up Clean Flight or Beta Flight. is moving pretty slow. Head over to firmware flasher. Go ahead and plug in your Eashin Teeny Cube. If you're on a Windows computer it'll probably start installing the uh, drivers. If you're on a Mac uh, should work because when I first plugged mine in it just worked right off the bat. Connected straight up to Betaflight. Okay you're gonna go select the Omnibus firmware select the latest version hit load firmware online hit flash firmware and you should be good if for any reason it says failed in this uh, this little progress bar right up here you're gonna have to connect the bootloader pads and that is where's that? I'll show you in the schematic where it is I'll also include this PDF file uh, download link to it in the description. Excuse me. Your bootloader pads are right here. That's under the board, right next to the microcontroller chip. Okay. All right. Let's just get that out of here. All right. Go ahead and hit connect. So first thing you're gonna want to do. I mean, setting up these boards is pretty much like every board it just depends on what firmware you choose and what PID you put in but this section is all up to you guys um, you're gonna wanna enable expert mode so you can configure your fail safe but first we're gonna go to ports turn on UART 1 and serial RX and UART 3 that's where you'll connect your DSM or SBUS receiver and let me show you where that is at first I was looking for RX in because I've never seen RC in on a flight controller before. So I just connected it to this 5 volt and ground, my S bus um, receiver, FR Sky receiver, and it worked. So this is UART 3, where you would connect your DSM, your S bus, or whatever receiver signal wire to. That's this little pad right here. And then you got 5 volt and you got ground. All right. Let's hit connect. Go to configuration. Turn on motor stop. I mean, it's up to you if you want your uh, motors to spin when you arm the board. You can leave that off. If you don't, you can turn it on. Uh, I like to set my uh, minimum command to 1020. And if you have ESCs that are compatible with D-Shot, you can go ahead and select that. But I'm using OneShot 125. Receiver mode, serial based. Then you got 1024, 2048. This is DSM2, that's DSMX, and I'm using SBUS. If you have a buzzer, I think you would configure that right here. But that's pretty much all I trouble in here. Let's hit save and reboot. I mean, if it's your first time using beta flight or clean flight, it's the same. It's the exact same type of setup you would do for clean flight. And I mean, all these setups are pretty straightforward. You head over to receiver. Now, if you're using SBUS, uh, AETR1234 is going to be the correct channel mapping. If you're using DSM or DSM2 or DSM, wait, actually, I think DSMX uses this also. But DSM2 uses the JR Spectrum Grafner. And, uh,. My transmitter is dead right now, that's sad to say, 
but if for any reason when you connect your receiver to your transmitter and you come into the receiver tab and you hit your yaw gimbal to the right and it goes to the left on this bar you're gonna wanna uh, you're gonna wanna reverse that channel in your transmitter so if any of these are going the wrong direction let's say for instance pitch if you're going up and this is going down you definitely wanna reverse that channel alright and then you can go ahead and configure your auxiliary channels in your transmitter All right, so head over to modes I got arm ear mode, angle mode, and horizon mode. Alright, these I normally put on auxiliary 2 and I leave arm on auxiliary 1. So all you gotta make sure is that this little orange dial, orange dot, ends up in this uh, this bar when you flick your switches. I can't show you right now unfortunately, but that's all you wanna make sure. And for this setup here, what I like to do is I have three modes three flight modes so I have angle mode for when I just want to cruise around have a lot of self stabilization don't have to worry about anything too much this horizon mode is for when I want to do some flips and rolls but still want to have some self stabilization and ear mode is pretty much like full control rate mode when uh, there's no self stabilization you just have to fly the quad yourself alright so you're gonna hit save and if you have a Tyrannus, you have uh, th uh, three position switches throughout the radio, so you can just configure which one you want to be on which which position, and you're good. Um, the next thing is your motors. You can set your throttle ranges right inside here. So what you would do is you turn this on. Make sure you have no propellers on your quad. Please, please, people, no propellers on your quad. Alright, so you're going to go ahead and turn the master up, plug your battery into your quad. Alright, take the master down. Okay, and your throttle ranges are pretty much set. Alright guys, and um... That's pretty much it for uh, configuring this board, you know. There's not too much to it. This is just a basic setup with this. You can get, get it flying up and running, and then later on you can come back in here and do your PID tunings, you know, turn whatever up, turn whatever down. That's all to you guys. I leave, I'm just going to leave it default and uh, figure that out as I go. Um, if you want to flash your ESCs, this board is also... Move that over there. This board is also um, compatible with the BL Heli configurator, so you can make sure your quad's pretty much built at this point, and your ESCs are hooked up to your flight controller. You go plug your battery into your um, to your flight controller. It may the ESCs may make a sound. It may not. Mine doesn't. I don't know why. You hit read setup and it reads your ESCs right in here so these are the ESCs I bought from Banggood the DYS 20 amp ESCs you can flash them you can change them in here do whatever you want um, but I just use this for flashing to the latest software oh got a phone call <laughs>